Hello everyone. Welcome to this course Kinematic Assessment and Human Movement. My name is Dong Huang. Today's topic is basic science. This is the first video of basic science. In the last video, we learned physiology. Today's topic is basic kinematics. Are you ready? Then let's go. First of all, I would like to show an example where kinematics is used in daily life. There is an example dialogue. Vincent, we are meeting at library at 11. Now 15 minutes left. Where are you? Can you make it? Hannah, I'm in Haumenza. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Vincent, good. See you soon. Here Hannah expected that it took about 10 minutes to get to the library from Haumenza. What is the ground of the expectation? There must be a simple kinematics for walking distance and velocity. Now we will see Hannah can get to the library in 10 minutes. And we look at the concept of kinematics in detail. So the first thing I would like to talk is distance and displacement. It is often confused with the idea of two concepts, but two are not the same. Here point A is the home menza, and point B is TIB library of Leibniz University Hanover. You can check various routes from the home menza to the library in the Google map. Each path has a distance, like 850 meters, 900 meters, and 1.1 kilometers. That is distance. Between two points A and B, any paths are possible, and they are all have different distances. If Hannah takes the 850 meter path, Google says she can get to the library in 10 minutes. On the other hand, if I look at the stride path between the Haumenda to the library, I can draw the stride line from point A to B. That is the displacement. As you see, the displacement is the shortest path between the two points. Distance can be changed depending on which path she chooses, but displacement is always the same. The second aspect is the direction. Displacement is more than just the length of the path between two points, it is also direction. That means the displacement is a vector quantity. What does it mean? If the dimension which has both magnitude and direction, as soon as magnitude changes, it is different dimension. If the direction changes, it is also different dimension. In terms of distance, it is a scalar which has just a size, but no direction. Generally, displacement is of interest in physics, but distance is sometimes used. The symbol of distance is d, and the symbol of displacement is s. When we inform the variable is a vector quantity, we can put on the arrow on top of the variable, or make it bold. An SI unit of both is meter. Now, we also have the measurement of time, that is a critical point because we are working with displacement changes. We are also interested in the time difference at the second place. So here are two concepts, speed and velocity. First, I put SP as a symbol of speed. The speed is travel distance of time. Another concept is velocity. The velocity is the changes of displacement. The symbol is V and an arrow is on top because it is a vector quantity. The velocity is delta S over time. Delta means the changes that gives us the average velocity. When people are confused with the two concepts, they treat velocity and speed as like the same thing, but it is not true. Imagine that you start from the how Menza travel the park near the main building and come back to the original point. The distance increases and speed is higher. They have some values, but the displacement is zero, so the average velocity is zero. As you can see, the magnitude of the speed is actually a different value. Distance might be large than displacement, so speed might be different value from velocity. 
Remember that the distance is a scalar quantity, so the speed is a scalar quantity, whereas velocity is a vector quantity because displacement is a vector quantity. Nevertheless, they use the same SI unit, meter per sec. And the final variable is acceleration. It is talking about how fast my velocity changes. So we are interested in delta velocity over time, which is acceleration A. Acceleration is based on velocity, and velocity is vector because it is the statement of the displacement. So acceleration is vector as well. Each SI unit is meter per sec square. From this slice, I'd like to tell you about angular kinematics. Angular kinematics is also very important in biomechanical motion because we move using our joint structure. As a quick reminder, we have two coordinate systems, rectangular, also called Cartesian, and polar coordinate systems. In rectangular, we use the coordinate x and y. These coordinate systems can be used in linear kinematics we did using the map. In polar, we use r and theta. r is the length from the origin to the object, and the theta is the angular position. And I will mainly talk about the angle theta. If you have an object somewhere in polar coordinate systems, we can measure the angle theta between the positive x-axis and arrow from origin to the object. In this case, it is about 45 degrees. There are different units for angle here, degrees, revolutions, and radians. We are familiar to degrees and revolutions, but remember, the SI unit is radian. Here is the equation for these the, the three units. One revolution is 360 degrees and two pi radians. So one radian is about 57.296 degrees. There are a couple of things to know about angular position. They can wrap around. So for example, if we have an object and it goes around and around, finally we got 1.5 resolutions. You can also have negative positions. If it goes around the other direction, so this one would be negative 0.5 revolutions. Now we notice that both objects are at the same position. So we have to be careful with our angular positions. Normally, polar coordinate systems treat from 0 to 360 degrees or from minus 180 to 180 degrees. In addition, we need to know about the concept of angular displacement for the explanation of our motion. Angular displacement is a change in angle of position. We can use the delta notation. As you know, delta means changes. Delta theta is a change in angle of position from the initial to the final position. Here is an example. On the circle here, an object has an initial position. We measure that the angle between the x-axis and the arrow, which is the initial theta. In this case, that is 35 degrees. We then move the object. Now the object has a new position called the final angle of position, theta f. It is 65 degrees. So the change is delta theta from initial to the final angle. Mathematically, it is just a subtraction. So 65 degrees minus 35 degrees resulting in 30 degrees. Important thing is it is a positive 30 degrees, which means it rotates in counterclockwise direction. If the displacement is negative, it means the object moves in clockwise direction. So we have to care about the sign when describing displacement. Now, we think about distance versus displacement, and we did this in linear kinematics on the Google map. The measurement of human motion, angular analysis is very important due to the structure of a human body. 
Here is an example with a basketball player's shooting motion. To analyze his posture and motion, we would measure the angle of his elbow. When we have to consider the angular motion of the elbow, the hand would be changed and the elbow angle is also changed. Imagine that it moves 30 degrees in counterclockwise and 15 degrees in clockwise. If you look at that angular distance, it's 45 degrees because distance does not care about which direction it goes. If you look at the angular displacement, it's just 15 degrees because the second displacement was going negative direction in clockwise. Similarly to linear kinematics, the angular distance is a scalar quantity and the angular displacement is vector quantity. Remember, displacement cares of a positive and negative direction, but distance does not. As like we did linear kinematics, there are also angle speed and velocity. Angle speed omega, which is its symbol, tells how fast the angular distance changes, so that theta over time. Angular velocity omega is about how fast the angular displacement changes delta theta over time. So the angular velocity is vector quantity, but angular speed is scalar quantity. So angular velocity omega has an arrow on top. SI units of both are radian per second. In terms of angular acceleration alpha is how fast the angular velocity changes, delta omega over time. As angular velocity is a vector, Angular acceleration is a vector quantity as well. SI units are radian per second square. Thank you for your attention. For the next video, please click the video on the bottom right. For the previous video, please click the video on the bottom left.